Oh, man. And it's Tuesday. So Tuesday means it's time for Between the Rolls, which is our attempt, Murder Hobo, it's our little attempt. It's the Murder Hobo family's, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right, attempt at a podcast. Uh, that's no, it. Not a podcast, a no, um, talk a show. Legitimate, a legitimate talk show. A legitimate that's talk by show. By the Murder about. Hobo Incorporation. That's uh, right. Illegitimate topics no wait entirely legitimate fantastical <laughs> topics helpful topics yeah. to the yes. player. Well, fantastical anyway. topics but <laughs> completely illegitimate ideas on them that is perfect Kyle. You fantastic thought, topics and so I no idea where to find them <laughs> well welcome everyone we appreciate your uh your continued support on uh on um between the roles on tuesday uh, I am joined by uh, by my compatriots, David, Carol, Kyle, uh, and myself. Um, please follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, if you don't do that, and you know, you can go ahead and you know catch everything eventually backlogged on YouTube. But we would prefer, of course, you not to do that because you know, you, you know, we would much rather you just tune in live and making sure every single second of interaction with us is live. That we're we're right here with you, and you're right here with us, and we're just having this conversation. Well, we're not really having a conversation because we're the ones doing all the talking, and you may be doing this on chatting and stuff like that, but that's about the extent of it. But it yeah. sounds you better if I say we're com should, I, should I just be quiet now and let everyone else talk? Uh, absolutely. That'd be great. Let's go ahead and have everyone oh, introduce themselves. Watching live, I'll go on. Oh, apparently, I have to update Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Uh, yeah. David, why don't we start with you? Uh, why don't you uh, introduce yourself and what you do? Okay. I am David. I'm a player on Murder Hobo. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, just your run in the mill average, you know, DD nerd. Unless you're going to DM a one shot. Who Maybe sometime <laughs> soon. <laughs> and let's not move with Carol. Carol, uh, tell us um, who you are other than Carol, because I just said your name is Carol. Carol, um, <laughs> what, <laughs> what? what else do you do here? I'm like confused. What? What are you? Oh, okay. So you want to say who I am, what I do? Yeah, what are your projects? What? I'm you're a <laughs> mini painter. You paint fantastic things. Hold on hey. one second. Let me show you. Oh, he's gonna get white. So uh, yeah. Oh, like, he's gonna get the mini. Let me guess, it's the Rimaraz. Of course, That'd it's be. gonna be the Rimaraz. So yeah, I'm a mini painter, and he's bringing. He's bringing. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. there it is. <laughs> so well, I like here, here, here's your Bone Devil. That's another one of my favorites, right there. Oh, I'm glad you like that. I'm glad you like the mini. So yeah, he was one of my clients, but unfortunately, the game he made them for was shut down uh, because of the you know coronavirus. Fuck coronavirus. This is much no, for, for only, you know. Uh, but yeah, I'm a commissioned <laughs> painter. I've Man with that playing. long of a beard, that long hair, white and old. Of course, Antifa is not going to let him fly. It's all their fault. It's all, it's all, it's all their fault. fault. Hey, you want me to say what I was? All right. So other than, the mini, theory. Uh, other than mini painting and being constantly talked over, so. I also... I also have been playing D and D and Pathfinder and other tabletop RPGs for about thirty years or so. So, long time gamer and occasional GM, but I like playing better. Let's face it, I just don't have the prep time these days. Yeah, ask any DM; they'd rather play. <laughs> hey, hi. Hey. Oh, my lord. Can you say paladin? <laughs> Can you say? Eric called Justice Man. <laughs> you know, all right. kind of, that was close diaper enough. Child. Okay, Kyle. Um, yeah, that's that's. Um, why don't you tell us uh, who your uh, co-star is there? Oh, hi. I'm Kyle. This is Arlo. Uh, I named him after Eric called Justice Man. Um, <laughs> that's not true, is it? No. Oh, no, that's, I need that. No! <laughs> and I am a player and a DM of Murder Hobo Inc. 
get out of here with your poopy butt. Don't open the fridge of doom. And uh, I have been on a hiatus for uh, many a long week, but I come back bearing new gifts of knowledge, trying to get Scott to get drunk off his ass again with my wonderful ideas. Well, Just to I, prove I, that I it's there. <laughs> and, and, and I have my bottle, so we're ready. Yeah, all right. Where's the, wait, wait, where's the Don Julio? Uh, Kyle, with that shirt, you got to hit green screen, dude. I, oh, it's hot, man. <laughs> <sighs> you can see the sweat glistening off my bald. Oh, actually, there's hair up there again. Okay, off my head. Hey, Scott. I will bring back to Don Julio. I will. But um, I, I'm 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 in solidarity with my with my wife right now, who's kind of on a red wine kick. We are kind of swearing off um, everything else heart. other than red wine right now. Hey Scott, it's hard going. I got one more thing I want to bring up. This is yeah. uh, so I just want to say I got this friggin' awesome set of dice uh, made by Carrie, our producer. Um, otherwise known as pirate dog dice, and here's the big D20. Let's see if I can get it. So that actually does say, wait, let me make sure I'm reading it right here. Yeah, that actually says, it says Taryn's song inside of there, and there's music notes and all sorts of things. And this is the big D20, but it's a whole set, and it's fantastic. That and pretty Gary, awesome. I really hope you bless these so they were don't rolling. actually <laughs> want to play that music that's inside the dice, though. Like uh, Taryn, it falls flat. <laughs> oh, oh, that's, that's, well, it, but it is a good segue into understanding that somewhere in the little stuff around that, you know, Frank didn't give me any understanding of between above me and below me to the left and to the right me. We have swag. We have things that we sell. We have oh, yeah. t-shirts and I'm like right there and I'm not wearing, I'm wearing a white t-shirt right now with the hole in it right there. I don't think they sell that, but they do sell. I said I'm wearing mine. Uh, you know, normally so in the conference of Murder Hobo Week. Yes, yes. What they do not do is they do not sell beards because we're everyone is thinking about doing a cosplay of me and trying to find a way to do this this beard oh. here, this white Santa Claus beard that I'm working on. That's going to be the next. Just get some just for men that goes white. Buy a wig. Just I'm sure I, can, brush I can't it. find hair like that. No, no, never, and, really. and you have to put them out at the end of your nose so you can read because I can't read unless I do this. So, what are we talking about today? Well, other than just talking about stupid things like we were just talking in the past few minutes, although they're very, very, very important, we're going to be talking about Paladins and the last few episodes of Between the of, of, of Murder Hobo Inc. So, <laughs> let's start here with uh, our first topic, which is episode one one three, Smugglers. Carol, why don't you talk to us about episode one one three? And if not, why don't you just entertain us for the next three to four minutes while I think of something else to say? Well, if you're really stuck, I can't help you. This is why I was good. I actually wouldn't have been so unhappy about hosting because I'm going, oh my God, what happened in that episode? Yes, and I played. So I should remember what happened in that episode. Uh, I, my my yeah, notes say was, Mushroom Lady Conking oh, yeah, no. Out Mortimer Sneed. Mortimer yeah, J. Sneed? Yes, Sneed? Mortimer J. Sneed. Of the Academy? Of the Academy. On sabbatical. On sabbatical. Yeah, there you go. So it was another cacophony episode, um, which I'm definitely want to play more of. I love cacophony. I love how it's so it, it's so open, and I feel like even though there this weekend this week we really did have a plot that we were trying to follow. Uh, in this case, we were trying to find uh, some smuggled goods uh, from I forget the name. I remember the symbol was a, was a mermaid, and there were several of the symbols based on other ships um we weren't just trying to find their uh, cargo we were trying to find all the cargo which have been swiped off of various ships at port so naturally of course we the clues immediately led us to underground mm. and there was the mushroom lady there was that said there was you know what if you want to watch it watch it um i'm just going to hit a few <laughs> of the highlights the mushroom lady yeah, the mushroom lady. Oh, wow. Was... You're just going to hit the highlights and nothing else, Carol? <laughs> Correct. 
<laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm listening. That's great. So you want to watch it? Um, it was good. It was an ex it was a ton of fun to play. Um, and I played I played a swashbuckler. Unfortunately, we're not talking about rogues tonight, but maybe at some point I get to talk about her uh, as the topic because swashbucklers kick ass. Who was we the, the GM for that episode? Who was the GM? Well, Frank was the GM for that episode. How did Frank fuck up? I don't think he really did. I mean, oh, it Frank was, was perfect. Yeah, I did. I can't think of like any weird dice, you know, like perform checks to pick locks or things because that really should be a favor or thief tools check, Frank. Um, oh, no, that's a performance check. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, it's and your great. swashbuckler should have been perfect at those. Perfect. But, but the perfect. reality, like so Frank, we, and his two-hour one-shots. Did we actually go a tiny bit over? <gasps> or we went a What's tiny this? bit over. I'm going to watch the episode now. I will nail you, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, but yeah, so yeah, there was we. Well, let's see. So basically, we followed the clues down the sewers. We had to decide whether or not we wanted to walk on the dry path or the stinky wet path. And we eventually just went to the stinky wet path, which we probably didn't even need to do. Was that okay. your take on it, David? That's <laughs> about it. <laughs> no, we needed to go down into the sewer. I mean. I'm trying to remember. I said, I remember the mushroom lady. Uh, we actually walked into a dry section where there was a lady who were, uh, she was, she had an inn or a tavern and she grew mushrooms in the sewage where she would then pick, I wonder what Kyle's writing, where she would then pick and serve in a restaurant. That sounds so appetizing. I'll remind me not to go there. Um, mushrooms. Kyle lies as a code breaker. So he's just writing random shit that comes to his head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had, all right, oh, I remember, before that, we, together. before that, we did run into some of their, some of the thugs. We actually had a fight on the way in, not mm. too far in, and I felt like we were about to pull, as they say, pull the dungeon, as you say in World of Warcraft. Mm. Basically, a low level pulls every single bad thing to them, and I thought we had done that because we kept hearing twice, they, we heard the alarm go off, someone yelled. Uh, but after the second time, no one else showed up, so... We, we, we proceeded. We found the lady with the mushrooms. Uh, and then we actually found, yeah, Mortimer J. Sneed. Oh, my God. I'm going to friggin' punt that guy. Actually, Carrie must have been so happy because she friggin' managed to bonk him on the head with her staff, causing him to uh, forget everything, including, <laughs> including a way, you know, including how to get in and out of there. And he started remembering again, and then I remember she bonked him on the head again. But oh, we, did get, we did get into the, uh, we did find the cargo with uh, uh, thugs there, and we took out the thugs, and then, yes, then we went out and found more of Jay Sneed, and she hit him over the head before he could tell us a quicker way to get out. And we ended up going back, and we found the boss. Mm. And quite now the fight I won't forget because that was a really interesting fight, especially since Carrie's character dropped. She was playing a necromancer. She dropped a fog cloud on it. And That's I'll always a winner. I have never <laughs> been so. You know what? I've never been so happy to have fog cloud dropped on my combat because, of course, I'm a swashbuckler. I gotta be melee. Mm -hmm. um, as they're the most effective when it comes to melee. You, they're not as great ranged. So. But here's the thing, on the very first attack, it did like 14 points of something ridiculous of damage. And I had like under 10 left going, yeah, the, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to take another hit from this <laughs> motherfucker or I'm gonna die. So thankfully she dropped that. So the mischance I think helped me more than it helped him. I and see. we took him out, but the funny thing was, is because of the fog glut, we did not know we took him out. The only huh. clue we had was at, at that point, we were also on the edge of like, there was like a, I don't want to say a cliff, but there was basically a drop. Mm. And I actually ended up falling off the drop because I can't freaking see shit in the fog cloud. And I was hanging on by my fingertips and all of a sudden I hear something go off and splash. Mm. Well, that's our, that was our dead BBEG. <laughs> 
which I believe, David, you killed. You had the closing shot on him. Yep, magic missile every time. <laughs> yeah. That's very uh, effective. I still think that was ruling because I still think you have to be able to see your target. I think it no, because uh, a magic I, missile avoids cover. So it, yeah, you just get, you have to know about where you saw him, I guess, right? I don't know, Scott, what's your ruling? I'm going to look it, it up. I think you, you have, have to, to see it? Some of them. I, you can't like go in totally blind and not know what square he's in. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I, I will, I, I'd be happy to look that up because I it's love magic you can missiles. See. Everybody here knows. Uh, that, oh, um, so 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 real quick um did you did you achieve the objective of the campaign yes we found the we found the boxes we could not bring them back ourselves so we told them where to find it and we took out hopefully we took out everybody in there that uh would be a threat to anybody retrieving said boxes and did you have fun Oh yes! Oh yeah! I oh, I enjoy. I really enjoy. I said I really enjoy playing swashbucklers. So that means yeah, you won. have fun even in the crap. One at D and D. Of course I. I Woo! Win! Oh, oh, I wish I had my green screen up. I would put a dildo just for you, Carol. <laughs> oh, sure. That's what you so, win yeah. when you win D and D. Yeah. What do you, you think the D stands for? <laughs> You never figured that out, Kyle. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, all right. So uh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, there we go. I told you, Kyle. <laughs> well, Frank just posted to me that maybe one of the Sunday crews watching. So hi, Sunday crew. Freaking <laughs> oh, Just got an itch here. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. mm, just a little itch there. All right. Saturdays. You should check. If you don't watch us, check us out on Saturdays. It's crazy. Okay, so now let's move to our next one, uh, 114. And David, uh, tell us about what it was like, uh, how you enjoyed that episode. Um, <laughs> uh, the episode has now been hijacked by the green screen of Dixon. It has. It has. <laughs> so that's, that's good. Uh, <laughs> So, David, what did what, you think about the um, um, uh, next topic? What did you think about the uh, Saturday one shot we ran? Uh, it, was, it was an origin story for Eric called Justice Man. That's true. And I'll have a follow up question for Carol real quick. But, Carol, you're going to have to keep your response to exactly one minute and 23 seconds. <laughs> Why? What a, Hold on. Wait. Let me get my notebook so I can count Carol down when it happens. <laughs> what did you think? Uh, oh my God, it was such a great episode. So much lore. Oh my gosh. If you ever follow the misadventures of Eric Old Justice Man, this, this is an episode to start. Anyway, uh, yes. So the episode is actually called, and Scott, am I pronouncing this correctly? The Relic of Imix? Imix, yes. Okay. I've heard it say Imix, but Imix is better. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I think so. So anyway, we end up getting uh, our, our party for that night ends up getting an assignment. It's basically we're, we're newbies. We're all level one. We get an escort assignment from the guild to escort uh, a relic uh, to a temple. I a mix? A relic of mix. <laughs> Not mimics, mix. Anyway, uh, so... We began our adventure uh, by meeting the person that was assigned to escort us. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, a cleric that uh, at first we have no no idea who or what this cleric is. Had a bucket helm on, on their head. It was a golden one or something like that mm -hmm. or copper or something. Uh, anyway. <laughs> So, so during our little inquisition of this cleric and uh, trying to uh, make our arrangements to depart on our mission, the cleric reveals himself, and it's none none other than Minister Justice Man, Ericol's childhood <laughs> nemesis, his cousin. That was a complete Big dick bully. to him. Big bully chat. He, he made fun of his speech impediment. And everything. <laughs> so. right, pretty much. Oh, everything. he got along with the rest of the party. Oh my really God! Well. You should have seen it though. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, 
it was a good time to be had. So anyway, throughout, yeah. I'll summon up the adventure. So anyway, we're on the escort mission. We get a we get a choice. We could either uh, proceed through a swamp or a mountain pass. Of course, we're not going to take a beautiful horse that Minister <laughs> Justice Man is riding through a swamp because nothing bad ever happens to a horse it's in swamps. a swamp. <laughs> no, not at all. So anyway, we have uh, our first encounter on the mountain pass, uh, two fire newts. Uh, uh, the battle ensues. Uh, I roll like shit. <laughs> Kyle does better. <laughs> and Scott. Scott Scott swings away like a like a you know like I get, a, like I'm a pitch hitter. If I remember correctly, right? The horse kind of gives me a little nub, love tap, and I end up falling out in the mud. Mm -hmm. Love tap the horse first, though. No, no, this, no, 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 no. The, the horse next, love tap came first. Yeah. yeah, that was the next little thing we we ran into. The first one we ran into, I ended up in the mud. Yes, it wasn't fair. Cobalt's got us first. Cobalt's yes. coming from the forest. Yep. And then Ericol decided to speed bag the horse's <laughs> yeah. testicles. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah. I was so, so waiting for that horse to kick him and fix his speech and out of it by kicking him so hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would have been nice. Oh, but oh my God. So, uh, yeah, Kyle's character, uh, uh, Gaga. Ooh la la. <laughs> Gaga ooh la la of the Roma Romama clan. Yes. Yes. Uh, secretly mage hands and uh, loosens the sta the saddle on Minister Justice Man's horse. <laughs> so eventually, <laughs> after we dispatch the fire nudes, search their bodies, plus we get a clue uh, searching their bodies. Uh, uh, as we made our way, the saddle eventually. <laughs> Falls loose and he ends up falling on his ass. Anyway, yeah. uh, the clue that we got was uh, a cryptic message saying that uh, something like uh, engage them at the pass or cut them off at the pass or something like that. So, uh, yeah. So, so we had a couple of other encounters. Uh, I'm trying to remember, Scott. What what was it? We had the dire wolf. The dire wolf. Uh, dire wolf yes. Yeah, we had uh, encounters with falling rocks. <laughs> Because right. again, this is a mountain a mountain pass, and we all ro rolled horrible for that. <laughs> and then, uh, at, just as we clear them, travel a little longer, we run into a dire wolf. So mm. that battle ensued. Uh, after Eric that, Hall was finally able to uh, impress his cousin. He I believe did. That. He impressed he, he his tried. cousin. He was so. No, no, I don't think he ever really impressed his cousin. I think you're probably right. Yeah, <laughs> cousin, great a asshole. Huh? <laughs> probably right, but I think that's a lost cause. Uh, go ahead, go on, go on. We're not gonna. Not anyway, gonna so uh, yeah. Next, uh, we run into a cobalt encounter. We run into a small pack of cobalts, and we ended up dispatching them. Uh, among them, we found uh more clues about something insidious uh, in it. Uh, but also at that pass, we also learned that there was uh, two uh, slain merchants. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, one of the things that we looted, I think was a, a bag of gems off the- Yes, 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 so a nice big bag of gems, yes. And then uh, we proceeded on through there and then we come to a crossroads. Mm -hmm. And as we're at the crossroads, there's this mysterious hooded figure, lightning yeah, shooting lightning. from the fingers. Yeah. And yeah, Minister Justice Man shows his true colors once again, bolts and leaves us there with this uh, Fire Newt Warlock, I believe. Wasn't it a Fire Newt Warlock? A Fire Newt like Warlock. That? Yeah, on a special, special episode of what is it? Um, um, a special episode of Family Ties. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> true. The true meaning of friendship, right? It it, uh, it basically, and I'm I'm just going for time here a little bit. Yeah, yeah. To um, sum it up, Scott goes back. We uh, leaves us on our own, and we have to fight the evil warlock, um, and uh, we make it to the city. Uh, and basically, uh, we ach we achieved the objective in so much that we survived. 
but of course, Chet or Minister Justice Man runs off with the relic we were supposed to deliver. Um, and to the, uh, to the Archbishop of Oldimara, and thus we can't really say we were 100% successful. One quick question to Carol that has one minute and 23 seconds. I, to Durant, Carol, I wanted to get your perspective, and, I, and, I, and I'm being, being quite serious here. When you, whenever oh, you have an episode, no, whenever you have an episode that tends to focus on the backstory of one character, how important is the interaction that you've seen, or as you're a viewer, I know you played a few things where Eric Hall has been there, but do you think that there was enough lore to understand the backstory uh, in order for it to be understood by, let's say, a, a new viewer? This is something I just wanted to ask you a quick question, since you did not play that night, but you were watching the episode. Oh, I certainly, and I trolled chat. Uh, if anybody reads, watches Twitch, they can see all my comments on chat. Uh, no, you, yeah, it was fine. I got a real good sense of the character or the interaction between the characters. Mm -hmm. uh, I almost felt like really he was your older brother. And he was that older brother, you know, that basically always insulted you, picked on you and such as a kid, and you were never, ever good enough for him. Right. So that right. was the stuff I got. So yeah, no, you had enough. Okay, okay, so it's up Laura, kid. Okay, that's fine. Well, let's AI, that real quick, uh, yes, yes, as a fine. player, I don't think there was absolutely enough lore on air called Justice Man. I felt personally like anyone who was new to watching Murder Hobo Inc. would just not get the true beauty of this one shot unless they were to go to our YouTube channel or our history channel and watch all the other episodes of Eric Call Justice Man in them or myself. You can screw the other two people. It's just me and Eric Call that you want to watch. Yep. <laughs> that's my personal opinion, great. though. That's yeah, completely that true. Great. So, uh, wow, my, my hair just changed. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually trying to repeat that whole part in uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where every time you see Charlie Sheen, his hair changes a little bit at the police mm -hmm. station. Love that. So anyway, that was our pop culture reference for uh, for the evening. Now yeah. let's move on to our episode 115, Trek to the Coast. Um, I have Frank here is supposed to give the uh, background. Uh, <laughs> but, but, oh, great but, voice of Frank. Behind the veil. Tell us what happened. Here's the veil, Frank. <laughs> no, you actually probably won't. I, I, I did understand that it was very funny. Who would who, who would like to comment on the uh, on, on uh, Sunday night's episode? Uh, it it was a very funny episode. Uh, yeah, uh, copious B, uh, copious V bitters ends up uh, living up to the true rock star reputation <laughs> that he has, <coughs> and basically, I mean, pretty much uh, just gets hammered by the rest of the troop. So. <laughs> You know what? I just I want to say I, had, I did not watch Sundays yet, but I'm tr trying to catch up on your episodes, Sunday people. Um, I'm it said I just haven't had a lot of time to listen to them lately, unfortunately. So today I managed to start the first couple. So it's so far, yeah. The, you guys are you guys are just as nuts as we are. So the voice maybe. of God is here. Damn. The voice of God says. Uh, the Sunday Margu campaign group is headed off to explore a newfound city lost in the jungle. First, they must find their ship. Unfortunately, they ran into the Carnival of the Dead. Uh, one of the members of the group is very focused on his pride, and his ego was stroked sufficiently that the others walked away from him and left him in with a group of uh, pseudo zombies and a Stroking vampire spawn ego. that nearly killed him. Exactly. Uh, fortunately, they created more than enough fire and did more than enough damage that the only thing that they need to worry about are the two bite marks on Copious V. Bitters the Third's neck. Uh, we shall see how that plays out. Voice of God out. Scott, it's all you. <laughs> Voice of God. That's right. Oh. I think I want to change my oath to an oath of devotion. That's it. <laughs> oath of devotion rocks. 
I we all do. It. We all do. So to uh, to a close off uh, our part of the discussion we talked about in the prior episodes, let's recap real quick. On Thursday nights, we have a group um, that uh, that that tends to play in cacophony. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. And on Saturdays, we can have an alternating our Murder Hobo Inc. campaign and one shots where you too can decide to be a part of the zany fun crew. You can even Sunday. potentially be on the DM side of things. Yes. Not yes. calling yes. anyone out in particular. No. Hey, Scott, on Carol. Sunday evening, we have um, something that I don't really know. So I'll let someone else explain what we do Sunday nights, and that'll be what we do every week well i can explain what we do all right so thursdays first of all if you want a seat on thursday as well it's it's You're a one shit out of luck no no it's only thursday. for a special inclusive group no yeah, thursday we're, and i'm not in it no, <laughs> thursdays is for anybody it's not just no, it's for not. Like, I, I, tried. I was told specifically i can't that is you true yeah yeah wait you can't, Scott, because you. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> Anything like that. Boy, you could if you wanted to. I did try to tell him, but I lost his email address. So. Yeah. So, so yeah, all days Saturdays we have we have the campaign, which is this week. I freaking can't wait to play. Um, and then of course the alt the off week we have a one shot that Dude, anybody he's can dead. Enjoy. He's super fucking dead. Not for long. Uh, we'll we'll see. Hey. Ever been by in the group, so not for long, dear. Um, and then Sundays is it, they were a group that Frank ran, I guess, for about seven weeks, uh, before to, at the very beginnings of Murder Hobo. They basically got Frank into doing this, so thank you guys. I'm really glad you got Frank into <laughs> doing it because now I get to do this too, and I'm having so much fun. Could you have worked with Frank to make him? better at it though uh, just my just just my thoughts anyway yeah <laughs> i don't know and say probably. <laughs> but wait a minute here kyle you you've been worked with them far longer than i have why has, hasn't he gotten any better then we don't know how electronics work i'm an idiot <laughs> <laughs> I never graduated college. I don't got them fancy degrees. I just bang metal all day long. Are you talking about the fact that whenever Frank, well, actually, I guess he got it right tonight because I think he was producing and we have sound. So, hey, that's a plus. Uh, he hasn't told us that we don't have sound yet. He hasn't told us that we don't don't have sound. Well, that is what? true. One of the, one of the His Sunday scripts are terribly written on torn pieces of paper. How am I supposed to read this script word for word saying what a piece of crap Frank is? Uh, you wrote that. Impossible. You're Exit that. scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus, Kyle. So uh, now we talk about our topic for the week, which is paladins. We are in the middle of a uh, small exploratory um, or if you're uh, Scottish, um, Palatins. Palatins. Well, here's my Scottish. No, that We're didn't talking work about Palatins. Well. Palatins, no? Eh, I should have gone more with the, uh, the like, the genie thing. Oh, so we're talking about the Palatins. Oh. There we go. Yeah, there we all go. right. Well, well we're going to get in trouble. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> and if I is banging you. at the door. Yeah, right there. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> so, um... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! I'm Scott. This is Murder Hobos, and I'm a white guy. See you later. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Uh, so no. Um, at the at the second half of the show, after we discuss uh, what our what our uh, exploits were in the prior week for our playing, we like to take on a topic. Um, sometimes we talk about DMing. Sometimes we talk about uh, world building. We're on uh, in the middle of an exploratory about the different types of character classes. Uh, and this week we're talking about paladins. So paladins. Oh Lord, have mercy! Um, oh my God! That's I, terrible, man. I, I'm, 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 gonna, I, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make two quick comments about paladins, and then I'm gonna keep my mouth shut for the rest of the thing. First of all, oh come on! 
You need to talk. You're an old man. You know the history of Paladin so oh well. Yeah. And I mean, really, this is a class oh, that's steeped in its history. Yes. Story time with Grandpa. No. Um, <laughs> oh, it, come it, on. No, 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 no. It, it, it's tune in for next time. between the roles with the old people. Grandpa's <laughs> going to tell his story. <laughs> so, uh, so I will say this: for the longest time, the Paladin has always been my favorite class, for the sole reason that it was one of the few absolutes that existed in character classes. True absolutes. That is, a character. A paladin had to be lawful good. So in, in an open world that that D&D was, where you could create basically any type of environment that you had, to me, paladin was an anchor class. It was a lawful good symbol of all that is right and virtuous in the world. The, the paladin began as a subset of the fighter class, and it had to be very, you know, very specific as to what you want to do. In Unearthed Arcanum, they did away with the paladin as being a subset of the fighter class and make it, made it a subset of the cavalier class, to where the cavalier basically was a knight, was a noble, but then recognized the fact that not all nobles happened to be lawful good. You had bad, evil knights as well, where a paladin maintained the lawful good uh, alignment focus of being the shining example and still an absolute. Now what's happened in 5e, and this is my personal opinion, and what I don't like about Paladins now in 5e, is they basically m merged the idea of the Cavalier and the Paladin to where you have whatever alignment you wanted to be, you were bound to an oath instead of an alignment. So you have oath of conquest, oath of light, oath of truth, oath of justice, oath of whatever the fuck it is. So you He's end up being making down. up a lot of oaths. Yeah, I'm making up a lot of <laughs> oaths. And, but, 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 guys, but, write that down. These are going to become great homebrew characters, though. <laughs> so, oath of wine, oath of, I mean, fuck, I don't know. Oh, my God. But, but, but you, you, were, you were bound to an ideal instead of an alignment. So that part was OK. but. In 5e, I felt that they became far too, too OP, and um, they lost that, that moral center that gave the paladin meaning. Love to play him in 5e. Absolutely love to play him, because I, I still go back to that, that, that core, I am the lawful good, shining light in the darkness paladin, and um, that's who I'm going to play. I think that's fun as hell to play. So when I play a character, love playing Paladins and 5e. When I DM, fucking hate them. <laughs> and the great weapons master, and they end up being the perfect little build class to fuck DMs. So I'm hey, going to say that. I'm yeah. quiet, and now we're going to let everyone else talk that's about That's Paladins that. in a nutshell, folks. <laughs> Well, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so, 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 Carol, Carol, um, let's let's hear your take on Paladins and Five E. Wait, 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 wait! I got a question for you. Would you have rather had seen them handle like uh, handle it the way I guess way Pathfinder Second Ed did? So the way Pathfinder did is they got rid of the they only call Paladins the lawful good version. So they did a similar thing where you have it's not elves, but you do have different, you know, different things you can pick that you can be, but they're strictly based on alignment. They call them champions now, and the only one that's an actual paladin is lawful good. Would you have rather seen D and D five E? Would you rather seen them do something like that instead? Call them a champion and then make it, you know, have each alignment or whatever be a specific version me, of the and me, one. The to me, the alignment part is is critical. So I would have been okay with the way the way that path and the way that, that I, the way that so Pathfinder sure. handled it. Yeah, I've been okay with that. It's just that when I look at the actual ghosts that are out there, conquest, devotion, redemption, ancients, crown, glory, vengeance, these wow. are ideals. And I would challenge anyone to actually tell me what the fuck is the difference between devotion 
and ancients and crown. Are, if you're devoted, you're devoted to a crown. You could be devoted to a crown in an ancient way. You could be devoted to a crown in an ancient way that wants to conquest. You could be devoted to an ancient crown that's devoted to conquest and glory. And then because that doesn't happen, it's vengeance. It's all fucking one. <laughs> it's one fucking thing. But they are different. They are that's, just, that's just Vengeance trying to more... count the angels on the top of a pin. <laughs> you can count angels better than paladins. Hmm. <laughs> I love that. Uh, toss. Right, so... <laughs> oh, shit, my mic was on. <laughs> <laughs> so, Scott, do you want to go with somebody else first, or do you still want to go with okay, me? Okay, so, so uh, David, let's uh, let's uh, let's hear your take on paladins, and uh, and and I really didn't mean to hijack that too much. I, I wanted to give my opinion just this is a grounding. But at the same time, there are legitimate things that we need to talk about the paladin class, what it means in 5e, and 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 what is your favorite uh, what is your favorite way to play them? Uh, paladin is the perfect class if you want to be a fighter and do a little magic without solely going into um, uh, Eldritch Knight class and being a full on gesh. I mean, with the difference being that you would have heals, you have some clerical clerical spells um i i constantly even though i i tend to play things other than this class my dm tells me you should have played a paladin straight on because uh the whole moral the way i play characters i'm too moral to play somebody evil so but anyway um my my take on paladins is it's like Scott said, it just depends on uh, your, your alignment. Your alignment is, it should be the, the, the core of what makes you a paladin. You, you're, you're uh, a chosen warrior. I mean, not just for, because of the oath that you take, but for a deity that you possibly serve. So, but uh yeah, I mean, you have uh, the the other oaths that are like conquests and vengeance, which tend to kind of toe that line. They're they're more neutral than anything, but uh, all the others tend to be good aligned um, uh, subclasses for paladin. I am darkness. I am the night. I am the other. And there's always that one that you're not allowed to play without your DM's permission. <laughs> so. <laughs> Right. Oh, I can't wait till you get to me, actually. Okay, Kyle, <laughs> that will make you last then, Carol. That's and then fine. Maybe That's we fine. just won't get to you. Well, I'll I go do. back to the general part of it, which is, you know, D&D 5e, we certainly tried to open up we, like I'm part of the Wizards of the Coast. Well, Fifth are, edition are, is all about we, we opening. All yeah, shh. That's why this show actually gets watched, guys. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It is. No, but the idea behind 5th edition was to make this easily available for new players. And honestly, when we talk about some of the older editions, first hearing about it is like, wow, you had to play a strict, lawful, good paladin. You couldn't go anywhere else. And so I think they got rid of that because, you know, that can scare people off from playing a great class. Now then, on top of getting rid of the lawful good and giving you these oaths that you can follow instead. They super overpowered the class that, you know, frustrates DM so much, you know, they don't really have any weaknesses. They have high AC armor. They can damage the living Jesus crap out of you. They can heal. Uh, uh, they don't have bad saves after a certain level. Uh, and they're it just immune to fucking everything just about yeah uh and so they just wanted to make this class yeah no paladins are great play paladins you know yeah it's not as scary as it used to be you can be an evil paladin come on uh and so they got rid of that and they switched to oaths now i think maybe behind the idea is they didn't want to get rid of that strict nature of you follow this oath or you are no longer a paladin right. because uh, you know, this is a line and you have to work your ass off to get to that six level. So you can become the invulnerable Titan on the battlefield and it should not be easy. In my opinion, as a DM, 
um, as a player, you know, you should really be trying to follow these oaths as closely as possible. Mm. But a DM should be holding a ruler up to what your character does because this is a lot of power. This is uh, honestly probably the most powerful class in in D and would say. I mean, and that's very well said, and that that, that deserves a drink. That that's that's a great synopsis of all my fishing. Has Bam, nothing to do yeah. with the fact that his main character is a paladin, but not at all. Oh, well, and and. To be fair, Eric called Justice Man. Okay. Players. <laughs> <laughs> players are the issues here. Working with DMs and players. The player's idea. Because if you say, oh, what kind of character are you playing? Well, I'm going to be a chaotic neutral. You're being a jackass. You're not being chaotic neutral. Or if you're being chaotic evil, you're just being that dick in the party. Let's be honest. It takes a while for a player to finally figure out, oh, this is how I play a chaotic evil. This is how I play chaotic neutral. No, I can't burn down the orphanage just because there's a devil inside because I'm chaotic good. Uh, <laughs> and so it's true. Uh, it is a better class, I think, for uh, older players because they got rid of this lawful goodness. Uh, um, which scared away players, it brought out, you know, some of the worst tendencies that players do have. And I've <laughs> very, very well have done these things myself as a player. And as I play, it's only been two years, three years, I don't know. Uh, I've seen every bad habit that I've had that I've seen other players have. Um, and one of the reasons I was saying is that's why Eric called Justice Man is such a great palette and being both naive but he is lawful good he understands the nature of that because scott is a very old player he's been around the block i don't know how many times honestly he's gonna have to get a wheelchair here soon to keep going around that block <laughs> how about a walker how about just a walker That'd be get those fun. little tennis balls at the end yeah <laughs> <laughs> the fucking tennis balls <laughs> not, it's not the fucking shaking on the walker just just, just wears your fucking elbow joints out yeah, yeah, yeah. well at least you can turn it around sit on it you know if you pay good money you can get that little bowl at the bottom so you can take a dump right in the middle of going around the block I know. anyway I know. but uh no like i said um scott being such an experienced player having been around the block seventy thousand times knows how to play a lawful good character entertaining in a way that's not terrifying that makes me personally want to play a lawful good uh paladin i really got off tangent here uh the idea is experience and uh uh uh, uh i forgot what i was going to say i'm I have sorry. no idea where you're going um <laughs> uh to, to scott come back to you cal <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. Now, Carol, you said you could not wait. So I'm going to keep talking and keep talking and keep talking. Eventually, you're going to talk over me because the desire to interrupt me to say what you wanted to say that was so important. Oh, my gosh, <laughs> Scott, let Carol say something for once. I mean, she just has brimming full of ideas that she just needs to spill out and let the world know, you know? Uh huh. All right. Are you two done? Are you two quite done? Yes, so, on David. Go, David. Uh, <laughs> no, because I'm, I'm, I'll get an ass beaten if I. That's right. He's Voice of dead. God, will you answer our prayers? Talk Voice over. Carol, Carol, go on. Carol, go on. I'm All not right. going to mute Carol. Carol, go on. So, are you sure? All right. So, I have a different thought on why they. One of the reasons why they eliminated alignment. Why they, they eliminated the alignment restrictions to being lawful good. Not all your gods are lawful good. You know, you have evil gods in the world. So how the hell do you play a paladin of an evil god? You can't. You I know? can. Well, I maybe can. you can. Go on, go on, but, go on Carol. Yes. But, I mean, I can assure you, I can play. I have a paladin that is lawful neutral. In fact, it could have been evil if I really wanted to do that, but it's for uh, Adventures League. And I decided I didn't like the um, the conditions I had to fulfill to play evil. So I left her as lawful uh, neutral. And she's a vengeance paladin, which is perfect for this character. 
But yeah, it, it's a very interesting mindset. Um, the God is Bane. So lawful neutral makes total sense. If you know what Bane represents God, it's basically the God of tyranny. So, um, in fact, the reason why I have, the reason why I have this character actually is because I'm not the only one. There are, oh, it depends on the day, but there are five of us who play uh, pretty much in all the scenarios when we can get together, and we are called the Hand of Bane. It's interesting. Mm. Five fingers, five players. We all have a different. Uh, we all have a different oath. Mm. Uh, and so it's, it's it's a very interesting group, but you are certainly right about how we annoy GMs. Uh, Paladins really are quite powerful. I also have an oath of devotion. I did go with the traditional pal lawful goody goody paladin with that. To me, that is the most paladin uh, oath you have is is devotion. Devotion. Um, but the most annoying thing I remember is there are two of us that have um, the fighting style where I can't remember what's called, but it's the one where you can lift, basically make your opponent uh, attack your neighbor at disadvantage because you got a shield and you can bl help block, try to block the blow. Protection. So, it's, called, yeah, it's, it's called the, it's called the fuck the DM feat. Yeah, yeah. really. Like the, well, it's great when two in your group have that and they're standing next to each other. So she goes, so I'll take that blow for you, sir. Oh, wait, thank you. Hey, I'll take this one for you. That's exactly what happened. We were fighting like a, a hydras, which had multiple heads and multiple attacks. So she attacked the paladin next to me, and I'm like, roll disadvantage. I you know, evoke that, and she goes, okay. And she rolls it. And then it goes, she goes, okay, fine. It's going to attack me. And the guy next to me, of course, had it too. And he's like, roll disadvantage. She just looked at us like, what? I'm like, yeah, we both have it. <laughs> what can I say? Yeah. Not everybody in the group does, but we, we're the only two that do. Or actually, that is a, that's a, that can be for fighters too. Um, but that's yeah, true. with all the smites, um, I don't think healing, now I know we can heal, but healing is not as effective. I think really you want a more pure healing class to be your main healer. I've, I've tried doing it as a paladin and I just find there are better things for me to do. Like I'm busy tanking this bad guy. I'd rather have somebody healing while I can focus on the bad guy and not have to stop and try to heal somebody. Cause even lay on, hands, lay on hands is a full action. It's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not a bonus. It's a bonus, right. Which, I mean, I guess in some ways I thought it should be, but, but in reality, paladins are broken enough that I, I can live with that fact. And so oftentimes, yeah, I don't, I actually don't heal as a paladin. I'll take the spell in case I need it as an emergency, but that's it. Usually as a paladin, I like to be on the front line smacking the crap out of that, that bad guy. And actually our group, the, the group, the Hand of Bane, our philosophy is we want to, we want to actually use all our spell slots for smite so we can blow stuff up. And we blew up a Rimaraz in one round, and I think it was like sixth or seventh level. Mm -hmm. And there were, I think there were five, and then there was a cleric, and there was, I forget what the other caster was, the other class was. I think it was another I cast. Not blow up this Rimaraz. Not that one. I'm we glad you really. Was a good Rimaraz. <laughs> No, so so I'm going to ask you a quick question then as a, as a follow-up to what you were saying, and then I would like Kyle and David to uh, comment on this as well. Um, the idea of the, because you, you bring up a really good point in that you have the clerics are the priests of a certain god. Right. And then the paladins are conceived from what i remember reading some 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 of the uh some of the books about how paladins came around whenever gary and uh and dave and all those guys were coming up with this is that they took the idea of the hospitaler class uh or the hospitaler group of armed priests during the crusades they were you know you had the you had the priests and then you had the you know military arm of the priests that enforced the will of the church, right? Yeah. And and, and even in Game of Thrones, you had what the uh, you know brothers militant or something like that. They were they ended up being you know 
oh yes, we're the church, we're the priest, we believe in nonviolence, everything else like that, blah, 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 up until the point where you're saying, okay, we're going to have a military arm as well. Well, the paladins were the military arm of the church. And you're correct in saying that, um, that what's to say that an evil God does not have priests and then does not have a military arm around that, thus the idea of removing the restrictions of, uh, of, of, of the paladin class. But why, and this is the question I pose to you, Carol, why can't you just achieve that the same way by, by not just have those as fighters? I mean, why, why, why dilute the idea of the, of the noble aspects of the paladin, you know, uh, that's kind of related to a knight, you know, defend the weak, defend the homeless, defend this, defend that, you know, sacrifice yourself, all these things that are kind of typically, you know, why not just make an evil fighter? Why does it have to be an evil paladin? Because, well, for starters, a paladin has a connection to that god and a fighter does not. That's the simplest answer right there. They have, a paladin has, yeah, they have a connection. They pray to this god and the god responds in kind by giving them these powers. A okay. fighter, you don't do that. Fighters yeah, just fighters don't do that. They're, they're, they're there. Yeah. There yeah, is you, no connection to their god. Okay. You, Kyle yeah, and David, no, tell, not, tell Carol how, how, how full of shit she is. I didn't say you didn't have connection. <laughs> You're have a, full of shit. Oh, no, 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 I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. saying that facetiously. Wait, 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 no way. I'm saying that facetiously. That's a really We're good kidding. point, Carol. Straight no, up. No, that, that's, that's, right, that, right, that's a really right, great point. I'll illustrate your point, too, right there. Okay, so I, you know, I play Taryn. Taryn has a god. She believes in her god. But she's not a cleric. She does not get any powers from that god. Mm. Unless she wants to build that connection. Or I want to start taking levels in cleric. Right. I have unless I forge that connection, it's still not the same thing. But Taryn so, has a god; she's devoted to that god. Even though I don't say a lot about it in the game, but we really haven't had time to discuss it in the campaign. So, no, no, that, that, that that's actually a really good explanation of that. The difference between why can't yeah. evil clerics just hire out mercenaries to uh, to well, end up doing their things is that they need that same militaristic group that enforces the will of their faith the same way oh. that, a, that, that, that a lawful good cleric would have. That, 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 that's you're a good not wrong, they can. You're not wrong, they can, but so can a good cleric. I mean, right, it, right. I mean, it's all the same thing. It's just that one, the, the one's philosophy is different than the other. Okay. One, is, one is evil. So, so Kyle, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you this question. <laughs> Um, that, that was a, that was a, that was a good defense of that. Would you ever play a oathbreaker paladin, or would it be as interesting to play an oathbreaker paladin, where the oath was to an evil god, to where you eventually you've broken your oath and now you're good? Oh, go the opposite of what your typical right. oathbreaker would be. Right. I mean, honestly, that's a stupid name for that oath <laughs> right. honestly it that's is not no point. you're not that's, that's my point why why do you have the idea of basing to an ideal in, instead of basing to an alignment because the uh th th this is this is my basic problem and i would like you to to give your opinion and then david if you can i would like you to expound upon that or refute what uh what uh, kyle is, is going to say I'll do my best. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, <laughs> gods aren't even part of the equation half the time. Uh, with the paladins these days, you have the oath of devotion. That is your godly paladin. And honestly, what I would like to see, or if uh, a player came up to me and said, yeah, you know, I want to be a, a paladin to a, a dark evil god. I'd say, okay, let's look at devotion. And we're going to make that into a darker god because... An oathbreaker, you're not an oathbreaker. You're more along the lines of a death knight or something like that. Uh, um, I mean, with ancients, you're serving fae. 
with vengeance, you might just be serving a spirit or an ideal that's giving you power like that, uh, among the other, say, oaths. Um, so honestly, the idea... Yeah, the oath breaker is hard, and honestly, just allowing a player to say, well, yeah, I broke an oath. What the hell did you do to fall from grace like that, that you now have dark, evil powers, and what what steps involve that? And right now I'm busy reading um, up on uh, Lord Soth. Is mm-hmm. that right? Right, Lord yeah. Soth. That's not, yes. Death yeah. Knight, yeah, who is, I imagine most people think of as your Oathbreaker uh, paladin in today's terms. The archetype, um, right. Uh, yeah, yep. I think that's the other problem with this class is that uh, uh, if you insist on not that it's a god and an oath that you follow, then... Um, it can really constrict the views of the class. If you think, okay, it's the oath I follow and it doesn't necessarily matter who I am happening to be serving, but that's the source of the power. The fact that I follow the oath, they then let me have the power. So like I said, ancients, Fey give you the power provided you follow this oath. I mean, they wanted to make a warden class that wasn't specifically named warden and how to blend it easier than making it fall into the paladin class um and that's going to be the hang-up of most people i think especially in the older editions where you have to follow a god you have to be lawful good you are then a paladin serving in that case um yeah, you know, that, that, that's that's hard and david i'll just simply have you uh, close us out on this topic and then we'll do final thoughts If you would rather play a paladin that is bound to an alignment or bound to an oath, what would be your preference? Because that, that I think, is where the central conflict of what we've discussed tonight is how do you play the paladin bound to alignment or a god versus bound to an oath? What would be your preference if you were to play a paladin? To be honest, I would rather go old school and have it to an alignment, you know, and to the particular God that you serve, you know, or, or, you know, that, that alignment is tied to, I guess. I mean, uh, like for example, uh, God, what if you, um, you know, uh, <laughs> you're, you're a lawful evil character and the, the oath that you took is under Bane, you know, or what, what's the one, the God of murder? Siric? Oh. Uh, he's been murdered several times, so it's kind yeah, of hard of course. to remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> if you go Forgotten Realms. Or you can have... <laughs> right, can have right. Or whoever right. Hey, it's not Ball? Ball. I think it's Ball. It could have been Ball, ball at some yeah, point, ball. too. Yeah. yeah, but like Scott was saying, what do you have to do, you know, if you're bound you to... to... murder somebody. Yeah, exactly. Really? You know, or to break that oath to Ball not murder somebody yeah like like break an assassin like you're assigned to assassinate somebody and you don't complete your mission but one of the the greatest examples of being a paladin is just like kyle i'm surprised you didn't bring up this franchise that one that's owned by disney that has that 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 dark lawful character you know vader and all that which one oh star Wars? wars Yeah, Vader uh, is, a, honestly, Vader I never... is like the perfect example of a paladin or, or you know, one that's like an Oathbreaker paladin. I mean, you know, his whole storyline. So. It is kind of like that. Yeah, it it's like yeah. you do have to kind of be a paladin of the Force. I mean, not the Force would be the god. Mm-hmm. Well, right. took me to make the pop culture reference, folks. But... Good job, yeah. <laughs> but basically to sum it up, yeah. Honestly, I was trying to throw in Dresden files with the yeah. ancients because you got the summer and the winter night, but yeah. it no. didn't come along. No, but like I said, I would have to go with alignment, you know, alignment. and yeah. 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 So th- that's, that's, that's really, I guess, where we have to kind of end our discussion on, on paladins. Um, they are very yeah, interesting cool. characters to play. Um, in my opinion, in 5e, they're a bit of P. But at the same time, 
If you're a player, lots of fun. As a DM, hell to manage and will frustrate the ever-living mm, out of you. <laughs> hey, that is the way it is. So let's have final thoughts, and then we're going to wave ourselves um, away from here. Uh, Carol, we'll start with you. Final thoughts. Um, Paladin. I love Paladins. I have said I have two of them. I do have the Lawful Good one, as I mentioned, and I have a ton of fun playing her as, like, the tank and quasi leader of the group. Um, I, th I think that's another thing. I think paladins are excellent leaders because they are char charisma based as well. Um, that's that's it. I mean, they're, they are there, and yes, they are OP um, with all the smites. But you only get a limit on how many you get. So, you know, use unless them you go full caster. That's true. If you actually like multi-class into like a, a caster class, then you can get a lot of, a ton of uh, spell slots for smites. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I've, I've actually considered uh, multi-classing cleric with my devotion paladin, but, but I do, I love playing them so much. I, I really, really do. And maybe someday the Hand of Bane will show up on Murder Hobo for seven, one shot or something. Yeah. I was gonna ma I was gonna make a, a hand joke about it and all that. I, you were saying I, the five I, fingers of Bane. <laughs> you were saying the five fingers the of Bane. Of I was just Bane. like, Carol, is there any per I, perks I, I for being a favorite. finger of Bane? Like no, a no, discount? No. Five finger no. discount? Yeah. Frank already made a joke saying it's the fist of, of Bane and we go into the wrist. And then I was like, no, we're the hand of Bane. You know, I was in the right hand. And I go, we violently finger you. <laughs> Oh my God, she went there. I didn't think she would, honestly. She usually shies away from uh, oh, no, violent no. fingering no. like that. She went DP. <laughs> <laughs> and and oh, by the way, by the way, it's great to mention now that we're at the end uh, end of the show. Um, mature audiences only. Um, sorry, <laughs> I did. Imagine that. F content or things like that. Kyle, let's have final thoughts from you. All right. Fifth edition paladins. Final thought. Destroy your notion of what a paladin is. Unless you specifically want to play the lawful good paladin, there's an option for that. But other classes and stuff like that kind of destroys your idea of this God-fearing man who is righteous and all that. Um, other than that, yes, they are an overpowerful class. I disagree. Talk to your DM about what they expect. Huh? I dis disagree on the not God fearing. I think no matter what your alignment is, you're still connected to that God, and you still should fear them. You still have to he respect. Meant like, he meant like the actual God, like like yeah. G God. Oh, are you, know? you talking about that? Yeah. Okay, that that right. like you know, Catholic God. You know that. Yeah. Like, oh, don't know. Yeah. Oh, I know. I didn't know my name. Allah. No. See, again, there's the issue, Carol. You went with the old notion of a paladin where you have to follow a god, and I think that's what 5th edition really just tried to get rid of, uh, is that old-fashioned view of paladins. You can still play the old-fashioned paladin, but for everybody else who can't comprehend the ability and what it takes to play that character, there is the oath that you follow, not a god. Uh, Bam! Like no, no, it's not your turn, Carol. <laughs> David, your final words. Go. My final words is Paladin. Do it. Play it. Yeah. Don't put your foot around it like I did. I no, seriously. I have to play a uh, Paladin. You do. Now. Oh do. my gosh, you do. Your assignment is to make a Paladin. <gasps> oh, <laughs> make a Paladin to join Jordy. It'll be great. We'll That'll have Eric awesome. Justice Man, oh, Jordy, yeah, and Walden, everybody Walden, else. Walden, yes. Walden, we're supposed to discuss. We're supposed to discuss uh, an ep, you know, an episode idea. Yes, all yes, paladin yes. episode. All oh paladin. Oh God. yeah, yeah. Different oh, gods, different friend. alignments. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I would totally fun. bring my friends to do it. I mean, we really are the one, the one party paladin party. We'd be the freaking Justice League. <laughs> But that that so good. Yeah, honestly, that would be good. So you're the Justice League, so Justice Man is your leader, right? <laughs> he's, far, he's, he's, he's far too naive and far too timid. <laughs> to be there, just backing everyone up. 
or be backed up. Basically, he's backing into things. So um, from all of us here, to all of you out there, remember, the more you know, the better. <laughs> The more you know, the better. <laughs>